I am John Ruane, making a report of the rescue that I experienced at the Los Banos internment camp in the Philippines at the, at the end of World War II. Uh, I'm making this report on July 21st, 1999, at St. Peter's College. I was one of more than 2,000 civilians who were interned by the Japanese Army at the Los Banos internment camp. I was at the time, and still am, a member of the Roman Catholic religious order called the Society of Jesus, or Jesuits for short. There were 118 American Jesuits in the Philippines when the war broke out. Many of them were teaching <clears throat> at the colleges, the several colleges and high schools which they had established in the Philippines. And others were doing pastoral work, particularly in the southern island of Mindanao. Some of us, the younger ones, were in studies at Sacred Heart College at Novaliches near Manila. I was one of them. I was a seminarian at the time, studying for the priesthood with other American and Filipino Jesuits. When the war started, we soon saw Japanese planes flying over Novaliches. And we thought it was a dangerous area to be in because our building was clearly visible from the sky and we thought that we might be bombed. So we fled to, Man to Manila for greater safety to the Ateneo de Manila, a Jesuit college there in Manila. Around the beginning of January, the skies were darkened by the burning fuel. The Americans were leaving Manila. The American forces were leaving Manila, and they were burning whatever fuel they had so that it would not be left for the Japanese. So the skies were darkened, uh, and we awaited the Japanese coming into Manila. They had bombed the city, even though it was declared by the American forces and Filipino forces, an open city. The first two places we heard that they came to when they invaded Manila around January 2nd was the San Miguel Brewery and our college, the Ateneo de Manila. They came to our college because it was there that we had the National Weather Bureau. It was directed by Jesuit scientists. For the next two years, we were under house arrest for the next two and a half years. And during that time, I was able to continue my studies there, but under difficult conditions. Our superior was Father John Hurley, a courageous and resourceful superior, particularly in dealing with the Japanese. He declared to them that the Jesuit residence there was Vatican territory and kept insisting on this with the Japanese for two years. But while he was keeping them out, he was letting in escaped American soldiers, Filipino guerrillas, and refugees, harboring them until they could safely leave and find shelter elsewhere. But Father Hurley could not prevent the inevitable. And in July of 1944, when the um, American forces under General MacArthur drew closer to the Philippines, the Japanese rounded up all the Jesuits and, and uh, other uh, civilians who were still under house arrest outside and brought us to the internment camp at Los Banos, about 20 miles south of Manila. And we were there for the last seven months of the war. And those seven months were a time of uh, trying to survive. 
the lack of food was most harmful to old people and to children in the camp. And many of them developed beriberi, a disease caused by malnutrition. Some of the internees who underwent surgery found that there, the incisions that were made would not close and heal. Uh, those of us who were young were able to survive without any great harm. But if the internment had continued another month longer, many of the internees would have died from starvation. While in the camp, I received the only letter that, I, that came to me from the States during three years. And that letter was a 25-word message telling me that my father had died a year before. On February 23rd, 1945, while we were lining up to be counted in the morning, as was the custom, we were counted each morning by the Japanese around 7 o'clock, out of the blue came nine C-47 transport planes overhead, low-flying planes. And soon they were dropping out of them paratroopers about a mile or two away from the camp. They were angels from heaven. Uh, we were delighted. And soon we had to run to the barracks because shooting began, bullets were flying, and uh, we ran to the barracks for safety. The, um, the American paratroopers soon arrived together with Filipino guerrillas who had surrounded the camp during the night. And the Japanese garrison was soon overcome, and many of them were killed. We were greeted by the American soldiers, members of the 11th Airborne Division, who urged us to quickly go to the shore of Laguna de Bay, some miles away from the camp, where we were to board amphibious tractors or Amtraks to be taken across the bay to safety. The barracks we had lived in <coughs> was set afire by the troops to get us to, to urge us to move quickly since it was feared that a large force of Japanese troops who were nearby would counterattack quickly. So we hurried to the beach, and we, uh, we uh, got on the Amtraks for the two-mile journey across the lake. And while I was in this Amtrak, for about 20 minutes, the Japanese troops on the surrounding hills around the lake were firing at us. And our navigator, an American soldier, was firing back at them. So we did get soon get out of range of the Japanese, and we arrived at Mamatid across the lake and, be, and the safety of being behind American lines. We were taken another, on another journey to Muntinglupa, to the new Bilibid prison, which became our home for the next several weeks until we were evacuated to the United States. Throughout that memorable day of our rescue, there was constantly evident the gentleness and the courtesy of the soldiers who had freed us. They generously shared with us their rations, and with kindness and sympathy, carried the weaker internees on stretches. One of the paratroopers I met was Matthew Pike from Bayonne, New Jersey. He asked that day, I met him near the lake, he asked him one day, he asked one day whether any of us were from New Jersey. And I said, to, I'm from Jersey City. So he said to me, would you on your return go and visit my mother in Bayonne and tell her I'm okay? So I did. I did that when I returned, and ever since that time, Manny Pike and I have been good friends. Many of the veterans of the 11th Airborne Division live in the New York area, and every year on the Saturday nearest February 23rd, the day of our rescue, they have a reunion at Follini's Restaurant in uh, Lower Manhattan. 
Frank Follini, the owner of the restaurant, is a veteran of the 11th Airborne Division. And each year now for the past 17 or 18 years, we've met there every February. I'm, uh, I'm invited to the uh, dinner as a representative of the internees, and I express my, I get up and say a few words and express our gratitude. The veterans uh, of the 11th Airborne Division have a great esprit de corps. And even though they had many victories in the um, Pacific during the war, they were constantly being used by General MacArthur. They are most proud of that rescue on February 23rd of 2,000 American and other nationals uh, from countries that were at war with Japan. Uh, and rightly so are they proud because it was probably the most successful rescue of its, of its kind in American military history, carried out on land, sea, and air without a single fatal casualty among the, those who were freed. Many benefits have followed from this achievement of the 11th Airborne Division. I can speak for the 87 Jesu American Jesuits who were freed that day. Um, some of these Jesuits remained there in the Philippines to reopen our schools and colleges that had been closed during the war and to teach in them, and also to provide as priests for their pastoral care of the people. Many others, like myself, the younger members returned to the United States or Europe to continue our studies and then went back again to the Philippines later to spend many years there teaching and doing past or doing pastoral work. <clears throat> Some have spent their whole lives there. I was there myself altogether for 16 years. There were four American Jesuits who were freed that day, 1945, who were still active in the Philippines, although they are over 80 years of age. The high schools and colleges continue to flourish on the direction now mainly of Filipino Jesuits who carry on the educational and pastoral work we were able to do because we were freed from Los Banos. So we are very grateful to the members of the 11th Airborne Division for their courage and skill on that memorable day. Thank you.